On this episode, the confidence is high. I'm feeling a bit uh, about this. <laughs> we make some peak game design. <laughs> Move! <laughs> of course, this is just a test. That's it. That's the game. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian from Laserdisc Academy. This is our advanced mod tutorial and today we're doing things. We're finally making the game. Well, we're not making the game, the final game. We are making um, a test run of our tool set and we're gonna see what gonna, what's gonna come out. Um, so I introduced this music uh, in two episodes ago and what I want to do is I want to basically Finish the level for the first music loop. Let's just do that. Let's do something like this, which I think will be around per minute So uh, the music for the first mm, uh, the, the gameplay for the first music loop um, The way I'm gonna structure this because this is kind of difficult to film I'm not gonna just sit there for a long time and then you wouldn't watch me uh, pull my hair out what I'm gonna do instead is uh, I'm gonna do like um, I'm going to do this in 25 minute stints. I'm going to record me uh, doing this stuff. I'm going to fast forward this part so we can kind of like see how I'm progressing along the way. And then every 25 minutes, I'm going to give you like an update of what I'm currently working at and what the challenges are and what the things are that I noticed. And then we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see if that's a good model to <laughs> document this part of the process. I'm going to have to admit, I'm feeling a bit uh, about this. <laughs> it doesn't feel so great. I, I'm a bit like, I feel myself procrastinating about this step because it kind of like, I'm I'm nervous. I don't know what what's what going to happen. It's, it's, um, it's a difficult step. And so if you feel about about these steps like this as well, don't worry, I'm with you on this. This is, this is weird, this feels weird. Um, yeah, but okay, so I can immediately tell that the first step going into this will be deleting all the, I wanna delete all of the brains, I wanna delete all of the um, um, uh, enemies that I've created, I'm gonna create new enemies from scratch. So I have a bit of a tabula rasa. I'm not gonna delete the uh, the sprites because obviously they are important. And also I'm not gonna delete the animations because they are also important. But otherwise I'm gonna wanna create a tabula rasa, an empty uh, empty board. Um, and I wanna start from scratch uh, and start creating those enemy spots. Let's see if that works out. Let's go. <sighs> Alright, so the first 25 minute stint is over. Uh, so far I've been just like setting up the stage, deleting all things. I've already noticed some things I actually already immediately changed. One thing is I noticed that in most editors the autosave didn't work properly. I mean it worked properly but the um, indicator for the autosave, like it, when I saved manually it will sh still show me the indicator of an autosave, like a little UI detail which I was really bugged about. Uh, the solution to that problem was um, here when you're, um, I don't know if this is actually also the case here in the schedule editor. Yeah, it's also here in uh, the case in the schedule editor, so I can fix it right away here. Uh, when you're doing the export here, the export function, uh, here down here where we are selecting whether we're going to show the autosave message or the actual real manual export message, instead of doing just auto, you have to do auto equals equals true. Uh, that's because I think if you trigger a function from the menu, uh, that function gets some extra information uh, automatically from the menu in the parameters. Um, I think it uh, refers to which button was pressed or something like this. Um, so this auto parameter was filled with some data that was unexpected. 
and that would all mean that every time you select saving from the menu, you would get the autosave icon instead of the exported message. Um, so I fixed that. Um, so now when we're exporting, we're going to get the export message and not the little autosave icon. Otherwise, things went uh, really nicely. Uh, I noticed some, uh, let me go through, uh, down the list of the things I noticed. I, I really need that animation preview in the, in, in the enemy uh, predator. <laughs> Predator, <laughs> an enemy. I need the animation preview in an enemy editor. I want to see what enemies there there, there are. I think uh, I think that's important. Uh, and also, I need the animation preview in an animation editor. That's that would be also nice. <clears throat> I noticed that deleting brains is annoying because you have to delete like every line one by one. So I probably need like a delete uh, this brain button. Um, I also noticed that. I cannot spawn things off screen in a brain editor, which is a bit annoying because I cannot really preview the really preview the way the the enemy will, will look. Um, so I need to carry over the on screen function from the uh, couch map to the brain editor. Um, but yeah, that's something that we're going to do later. I, I, it's not it's not mission critical right now. Uh, I also would love to be able to copy brains. That's also another thing I want to have. Yeah, also I'm considering because like right now I had like, I created two uh, simple enemies that are very similar to each other, but they're based on the same sprite and probably should have also the same HP. So I'm wondering whether it might be wise to, um, on a spawning level, to be able to customize the brain editors, It'd be like spawn this enemy, but with this brain, you know? So I don't have to create a separate enemy for like sl slight, slight differences between different, um, um, like different behaviors. So I can have create just like one popcorn enemy and then on the spawn level, I will decide which brain level will uh, get applied to this. Mm, I'm, I'm gonna have to think about this. Yeah, and also finally, that's a, what, was something I was struggling with just now. I mean, maybe we don't have to deal with this, but um, the schedule editor broke down when I deleted all of the enemies. Uh, and it also broke down when I moved around the enemy. So I, maybe I want to make the schedule a, little, a bit more robust. But on the other hand, maybe it's, there is not going to be a lot of situations where I actually run into problems with that. It's just like an exceptional thing that I'm doing right now where I'm deleting um, all of the enemies. Um, yeah, so um, the game looks like this. So <laughs> we're flying and there's an enemy flying past. That's it. That's the game. <laughs> After 25 minutes, listen, game making is difficult. <laughs> no, no, no. I created two enemies and now I want to actually bring them in the schedule editor and I want to time them correctly. So they're kind of like um, appearing in the music. Um, this beginning here is a bit difficult for me because I don't want to overwhelm the player too early with stuff, right? So I want to show some enemies very early on and I want to be there to be just dead air. Uh, at the beginning, uh, but also I'm not trying to kill the enemy, uh, the player just yet. It's kind of a little bit of a tutorial phase where I'm showing them some enemies and the enemies won't kill them immediately, so they have time to react. Uh, and it's like the timing of it is a bit difficult. Uh, but yeah, that's some, something that's going to be the next step. Um, on to the next 25 minutes. <laughs> So this is how far we got. So I think this first segment is, we kind of got something in the first segment here. Let me load it up. Um, load couch map. Uh, right, so we have like this intro. We have some uh, popcorn flying past, but that doesn't hurt you technically, except this popcorn, this hurts you. And then we have some static enemies. So the idea is that when there is this intro happening, there's like very fast flying UFOs that kind of like don't pay attention to you just yet. 
uh, and the first two UFOs that are flying past, they if you stay in the center of the screen, they won't hurt you. They, they will just fly past you. If you want to go after them, then might, that might be a bit difficult. Um, and then at the end of that first section, there's actually a bunch of UFOs that actually shoot at you. Um, and um, They might be a bit difficult. And the reason why I want to get like those shooting enemies early on in the game is because I want to kill the player, maybe, already. Because that kind of sets a tone for the, for the rest of the game. If you, um, if you kind of like st start very mellow, right? Uh, then that can be a bit difficult for... Actually, that can be actually detrimental to, I think, to... Um, to learning to play the game, um, because then uh, the player doesn't really develop skills or doesn't really, you know, uh, show up with their A game uh, against the game. And then um, once you then later on crank up the difficulty later on, it's, it's kind of like a vibe shift suddenly. And it's like, wait a minute, I thought I was playing a different game. I thought I was playing a game where things would be easy, but now suddenly things are hard. So now I, it's not the game that I thought it would be, you know, it's kind of like, um, your understanding of the game changes later on. But if the understanding of the game early on is that, no, you you are under pressure right now, right? Um, then I think it's easier to accept difficulty increasing later on. And also, um, I think when you die very late into the game, that feels more demoralizing than dying early. If you die early, it feels like, oh, I'm just going to go again. You know, it's like, it's no problem. I just started anyway, right? But if you late die very late in the game, it's like, oh no, now I have to go through the section that I already know, that's very easy, and then to get to that section later on, and then I'm going to get the challenge, you know. It feels like restarting is such a bigger ask when you die late in the game, and it's such an easy ask if it's you die very early, right? Um, so maybe, um, so there's like this bunch of enemies, uh, let me show you. So I created like this bunch of fast flying enemies here, these three here, that actually shoot uh, bullets at you. Now I already noticed that I kind of probably want to be able to change the speed of the bullets without having to create a whole bunch of patterns. <laughs> this is a bit of a difficult thing because I think um, depending on what kind of enemy you're talking about, the bullets might have widely different speeds. Uh, I can already tell. Um, so these bullets that I'm having here, because they're fast flying enemies, I want the bullets to be also fast flying because otherwise it seems like the bullets are lagging behind the enemies. And uh, so they're, the bullets here are flying at speed 2, I think, around to speed 2. And that feels kind of... Um, but that shouldn't be like the standard speed for other bullets, right? So uh, it's, it's a bit difficult. Anyway, so after this, this intro, it, the intro has like this very very energetic ending blah, 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 and building up and then you get like a bit of a mellow bridge section and in this mellow bridge section i want to show a bunch of popcorn enemies that just pop in and hover and shoot at the player and and i want to just maybe increase intensity so this is this first bunch of enemies already i've created a bunch of um brains for that and um i have cr created three brains one is that shoots and flies down one that shoots and turns around and one that just stays there and so by changing like the composition of those those uh, uh, formations, I can vamp up the difficulty. I want to, at this point, because the music is, is a bit more mellow, I want to, again, to kind of slow down a little bit, to kind of like give, give uh, after this difficult, uh, difficult attack, I want to give the player a little bit of a breather, maybe throw a, a slow ball um, to kind of get them, uh, allow them to catch their breath a little bit, and then slowly ramp up to uh, the difficulty to the next section, which is going to be like this anthem section, right? That's my thinking currently. I don't know if this will work out. Again, I'm still not sure about the speed of things. It's it's really difficult to judge the speed, um, especially since I, I I'm you know I'm replaying the section over and over again, so I'm used to what 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 will come, but the player might not. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a difficult. Um, yeah, now we're going to see what happens now. All right, um, yeah, let's continue.
Okay, so it's a new day and I'm still working on this. Um, so I think I've completed now this section with the bridge uh, happening, um, where it's basically like different formations coming in, kind of like a little bit in rhythm of music. There's like, there's like four beats uh, in that section and I have like four um, groups of enemies coming in and roughly kind of like that kind of rhythm. Uh, left and right and left and right like very uh, regular rhythm and it kind of like increase a little bit in complexity so you kind of have to stay longer on each side to get rid of all of the enemies uh, at the end there's a bit of a like a little surprise enemy kind of like a leftover enemy that is kind of uh, breaking up the rhythm a little bit so you can see that um yeah here is like the the two um so just like the bit <laughs> Begin from scratch, there's like two very fast moving enemies that don't do anything. They shoot at you. This is the first group of enemies during the bridge. There's a second group of enemies during the bridge. Uh, and then this is the third group of enemies during the bridge. These are now like um, four enemies. And this one is just like the enemy from the previous group flying away. And then this is the last group, and this one, this group is really big, has like lots of enemies happening here. And then you get like this one stray enemy happening here. Well, while these are flying away, you get like this one guy, and that guy lingers a little bit and shoots repeatedly. This is kind of like the idea here. I think it works pretty well. It's a little bit formulaic, but I think at the beginning of the game, uh, it's okay to be a little bit, you know, just like... Um, um to not to have a two of a dynamic play field right now the dy dynamic play field comes in now where we um yeah when the anthem begins so there's like duh, 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 like the the main theme of the game of the music um kicks in and i want to show something amazing right um so i'm planning to do a lot of like snakes like we had like this idea that we can spawn a lot of enemies that are um, we had like this this example snake pattern kind of enemy. I don't want to maybe bring a lot of snakes now because I feel like these kind of like feel awesome uh, and it might be really difficult to avoid them. Now, um, there is some things that I noticed. There was a problem. I wasn't able to really edit an enemy on the right side because when I clicked, uh, the drop down menu was uh, off screen and I fixed this. Um, where did I fix this? Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, th this is the uh, the function that that spawns the drop down menu, and basically it had like you know um, put the drop down menu where the enemy is. But now I change it so that the drop down menu is where the enemy is, or um, you know at the left edge of the screen, uh, right edge of the screen. If the enemy is really far uh, to the right, right edge of the screen, I might need to do this the same thing with the enemies very low down on the screen and so forth. But right now I'm just like fixing all the problems. This was like a very easy fix, so I just fixed it right there. Okay, um, some notes that I noticed, some things that I noticed while uh, doing this. I noticed that I um, frequently have this problem that when I'm uh, repositioning an, um, uh, an enemy, uh, it doesn't quite behave the way I think it behaves. Like for example, if I say like, I'm gonna move this, right? If I click somewhere, it actually doesn't, move the enemy where I clicked, but it moves the, moves the spawning point to where I clicked. So I probably want to change it so that it it doesn't move the spawning location necessarily, but it actually puts the enemy sprite where I clicked. And this is now really bad because now I moved it around and I maybe also want to make make an undo here. So I want to be able to press a button. If I move something around and be like, oh no, I want to be able to press a button to undo this. So undoing and making sure that when I click somewhere, uh, the sp sprite actually shows up here, but as for now, I can leave it for now. That's something that we're gonna do after this episode. Yeah, and also I noticed like right now I have like, let me show this real quick. So right now I have only one enemy. <laughs> Technically, there's just one popcorn enemy, just like different behaviors for that one enemy. And that seems like a lot of like redundant data in our enemy database. So yeah, I'm leaning towards maybe making it so that I can, when I spawn an enemy, I can modify also the brain that is applied to that enemy. So the enemy and the brain are kind of a little bit treated separate. Maybe each enemy will have a default brain, but I can override that default brain and exchange with a different one if, uh, if I want to. Okay, but for now, let us move on to this anthem section.
All right, so I think we got like a first glimpse into the Anthem kind of thing, situation where we have the, like, the snakes coming in. Uh, some problems that I encountered that I immediately fixed because they're like quick fixes. Uh, I used for the first time the SOM modifier since a long time and I noticed that it was buggy. Uh, so the SOM uh, pattern modifier. It had a P3 here, it should be P2. Uh, it was making the wrong kind of pattern. Um, just like a, a variable name problem. A another problem that we had is like the copy list. This copy list function here, uh, that wasn't actually in the uh, couch map uh, Card, so I copied the copy list into the couch uh, couch map card. So now this is working well. Um, I immediately noticed that we're probably gonna need a feature that we don't have right now. So right now I have like those swooping, swooping uh, snakes coming in, and they're coming like from the right side. And now then you have one from the left side, other way around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like coming from both sides, right? And it's kind of annoying and wasteful that I have to create like two brains because left and right brain and then you have to create two different enemies for left and right enemy. You know, it's, um, it would be nice if on the schedule level we could say like this enemy with this behavior mirror it, you know, so we can, because quite quite often we have situations that I already noticed that we have situations where something's happening on the left and then we just repeat it on the right side. And now I want it to, um, so I wanted to just like create one swooping snake and be able to then just like mirror it. Uh, so functionality that we maybe need for, for later on, but for now I'm gonna continue with this. I'm gonna see how, uh, how far I will get with the current system. Right, so I have like two swooping snake, snakes uh, and each one of those enemies shoots at the player. And uh, I used a little trick. I'm not sure if this works, but I, it's kind of nice and challenging uh, where when the enemies shoot, they uh, it's actually in a loop. So they constantly shoot. Each one of the enemies constantly shoots at the player. But the shot, the pattern is set to some at like uh, 30%. So it, it looks like they're shooting a little bit randomly. And I think this works out as a really nice dynamic challenge. And the snake is really terrifying, I think. Uh, I'm wondering if I maybe should tone down the snake a little bit because <laughs> it's it's really overwhelming when it comes in. Uh, but we do like balancing maybe later on. I just like, it, I want to just make it so that it's roughly playable. And uh, uh, and make like to make sure that all the patterns come in and so forth. And then when we have like a rough version, I mean it's a test anyway, right? Uh, uh, but if I have a rough version of it, and then we're gonna see uh, about playability and and stuff like that, right? So I'm gonna continue with anthem section. So adding more snakes. So now I have like I had snakes coming from the top. I might want to maybe have snakes come from the bottom and circling, and then maybe some wavy snakes. You're gonna see lots of snakes while the anthem is playing. And then once that, that's finished, we're gonna mellow things down a little bit. Okay, let's go. So I'm in the middle of the snake thing. Uh, I have like a total of five snakes. I want to have maybe six snakes. So there's like two snakes coming from, from above first. Then there's two snakes coming from the bottom. And then I experiment a little bit. I, I want to have like a wavy snake. And I have a wavy snake. I had a diagonal, but it was kind of a little bit boring. So I have now coming one, one coming down, shooting sideways. And I want to have a second one at the same time coming up uh, horizontally and shooting downwards. So you get, you get a bit of a grid pattern perhaps. I'm getting come to grips with all of the systems. It kind of like work together nicely, especially I noticed that switching between the different editors now that the autosave is in works really, really well. I like that. Uh, I'm really happy how this works out. I don't have to care about saving and exporting. I still do it sometimes, but you know I can just quickly switch between different editors and it's cool. 
uh, some editors feel a bit redundant, like the enemy editor, again, is a bit weird. I have to create a new brain, I have to create a new enemy. It's, it's a little bit weird. Um, maybe you have to uh, uh, reconsider how that works exactly. Uh, but no, it's, it was fun creating the snake. It's fun to engage the pattern system, and we haven't even created good patterns. Uh, I already noticed I kind of like abused the spread pattern uh, modifier to slow down a bullet. Uh, I'm gonna think about that later. Um, uh, one question that comes up as I building those patterns is because right now I have a lot of popcorn enemies, so it's like a lot of enemies on the screen right now. I'm thinking about whether I really want all of the enemies on the screen to be killable. Like if it's possible, if you route it just right to just eliminate all of the enemies. I heard in a discussion online at some point that it's bad form to make it so that enemies not are, are not all killable. Uh, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, right now, I'm not caring about this too much. I'm just like putting some enemies on the screen and I'm gonna see what happens. Um, we might uh, later encounter that some people are complaining about certain patterns that ah, I won't be killing all our enemies, but there's too many. Um, this is also, by the way, something where maybe the abilities come into play. Like if maybe we're going to give our players some kind of lock-on ability or a bomb ability that uh, allows us to kind of like smooth out those kind of like parts where there's really a lot of enemies and you're really overwhelmed. Um, no, but so far it's good. The explosions feel a bit repetitive. That's something I have to also think about. And maybe create three different explosions so there's a slightly different tone so it's not always the same explosion repeating all right uh no but so far i'm having fun i'm this is this coming together and so now let's create a second snake uh, like the second the horse <laughs> the sixth snake <laughs> another snake we want to create another snake and then we're going to move on to the section where uh the, the anthem melody is repeating but a little bit muted uh, and for that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to try to see what happens if the current brain system uh, creates a ground enemy, what, what that looks like when there's a ground enemy with a current uh, brain system. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, we're going to continue. So I think this snake section thing is complete. So now we have to move on to the, um, I call it melody section, where we kind of get like a, the anthem melody, but a little bit more muted. This snake section was really fun. Um, I, I'm not quite as happy with the last two snakes. I was I was trying to wrap it up in kind of like a more spectacular fashion, but I don't think, like I made the horizontal and vertical snakes that are shooting out and this didn't quite work out the way I expected. Something that was surprising is, was to see, and it's good to see, you know, all my decisions play out nicely. Um, so in the pattern editor, yeah, I created like a little three part bullet and then I applied it to the snake in the, in the, in the, in the brain editor. And the snake had like a snaky movement, right? And because of the snaky movement, the bullets were squished together. So the, the shot was like very, narrow and also slanted because the bullets came out like in rapid succession and by the time the next bullet is fired the uh, the ship has moved slightly downwards so it's slanted and squished together so the shot doesn't look the way it looks in the pattern editor uh, and uh, that was nice it was nice to see that this uh <laughs> that this doesn't work the way i expected it to work right um, no, that's good. That's actually a good thing because that shows shows me that it was good that I see a preview of the shots in the brain editor already and I was able to c catch it. 
Uh, yeah, not quite so sure about the last two snakes, but I think that's something that we might fix in the next pass. Something that was really nice is adding these. Like, this is a really nice enemy pattern, which I might actually reuse in a final version of the game. Uh, it's kind of like just like a, a popcorn enemy that flies in and stays there for a longer period of time and just keeps shooting. And I think this is good. Uh, and they they add a lot of spice to this sequence because otherwise it's just like all shooting down popcorn enemies and these guys um, add a lot of bullets to the screen. Generally, I'm having more fun when there's more bullets on the screen and maybe this uh, might be a good task for the next section. So in this next section, um, right now, everything I've seen here were popcorn enemies and it gets really stale because all of the enemies disappear immediately when you shoot at them and they never have enough time to saturate the screen with bullets. And I think this, these uh, enemies might be like the learning here, that like we I might want to create enemy patterns where the enemies stay longer on the screen before they disappear. Right now I have like an enemy that flies in, shoots, and then flies away. I think it has to shoot multiple times before it flies away. So this is, this is my thinking. Um, but yeah, it's something for the next pass. And also for this next section, I want to have as I said, I want to maybe introduce some uh, enemies which are more um, less popcorn-y. Like, I obviously don't have sprites for less popcorn enemies, but maybe I'm going to use the yellow sprite for enemies that are a bit tougher, have more HP, so that you have to shoot at them a little bit more, and that are able to actually put some serious bullets on the screen. And also, I want to try out ground enemies here. I want to put some ground enemies here, and I want to see how they look. All right, let's see if we can make this work. Okay, so I've um, started a work on the ground enemies. I've created a bunch of ground enemies and I immediately see a problem, I have to write this down. And that is that I can put in ground enemy stationary on the playing field. I just m make it move at the same speed that the screen is scrolling and it roughly appears stationary. It kind of, there's a bit of jittering, a little bit of fighting happening, but it's okay for now. The problem I have is that once I want the ground enemy to move around, that is difficult to pull off. I kind of tried this with this enemy here, with these kind of like, I pretend these are tanks. Uh, these enemies move along the street and, and move in position. Um, the problem with that is when they're moving sideways, what they're actually doing, because they're also, they have to move with the screen, they're actually moving diagonally. And uh, I have to really tweak the speed because if they're moving faster, then they will actually move ahead of the screen, and if they move slower, they move um, slower than the screen, they will fall behind, and that illusion that they're on the ground will be broken. So uh, it's a lot of work to make them move around on the ground, uh, if they're ground enemies. And there's like some other things, like I want my plane obviously to fly above the ground enemies, which is not possible right now. So yeah, I would definitely gonna need a ground enemy flag that will automatically move the enemy with the screen, and all the movement that will happen is in addition to that, so I don't have to like calculate out the ground movement. Um, otherwise, I created the more beefy enemies now, and they just like fly in from the side and shoot down. This is great. This works really nice. And again, I'm kind of like miffed that I cannot just like take this pattern and just flip it so they come from the other side as well. <sighs> We're gonna have to think think about it later. I also did something funny. Okay, so the problem is now that the part that I'm editing is kind of like very far in and I don't want like whenever I'm testing this section, I don't want to be like play it all on, on, on up to that part. So I've made it so that um, I can start at a certain scroll value, in this case 208. But what happens then if you, if you just like start at scroll value, <laughs> it's kind of 
Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Oh, this is so good. So what happens is that all of the enemies until that scroll value, like from the beginning of the game until that scroll value, spawn at the same time. <laughs> that looks so awesome. Ah! <laughs> and I kind of amazed, like, look, this, this, the game is like handling this. Like, yeah, I mean, okay, we're get, we're redlining here, but we are allowed to redline that when there's so much happening on the screen. <laughs> We're not rat lining as much as I thought we would. Uh, yeah, so uh, what you have to do is like you have to loop um, when you start at a certain scroll value, you have to loop through the uh, schedule and you have to set the index for the scroll. Um, um, like sked i is the next uh, uh, spawn that will that is scheduled to spawn. Um, you have to set it to a higher value so it starts spawning you know, at the next enemy that it should supposed to appear not at the very beginning of the schedule. Uh, and yeah, this little code here uh, handles that. It's just like a temporary code for now. Um, it's just like to do debugging stuff. And maybe we, at some point later on, and maybe that's something I also should put on my list, we're going to add like a um, waypoint system so I can launch the game at certain positions. Because right now also when I do this, the music is not the right music. So my, my might want to set the waypoints according to where the music loops. So um, I kind of always hear the, the correct uh, background music. But for now, for debugging purposes, this is all fine. So yeah, I'm working now on this melody section. I want to now bring in the yellow enemies from the other side, maybe a little bit. And then we're going to get to the dark, you know, the big enemies section. Let us go. Okay, so this looks good. I kind of like started doing the big chunky enemy, not quite sure at which speed. It's moving a little slowly right now. I think I need to, it needs to be a bit faster than, than the background. But yeah, this feels good. It it comes in when the when the music is very like you know menacing. So this feels like this enemy has you know some staying power. Obviously, I'm not going to use this sprite, but you know, just like showing a bigger enemy that seems more menacing is cool. Uh, the pattern is something I lifted straight from uh, Aspirate, which I thought worked very well. Um, so yeah, this is good. Now um, I, I want to like now like introduce more enemies, kind of like during the sections. So this is going to be like a section where you're fighting a lot of those those uh, big, big, big enemies. Uh, some things that I noticed throughout this um, this last session is that. Um, yeah, I mean, just there to reiterate, the game is more fun when there's more bullets on the screen and the game is more fun when there are some enemies that are tougher that you kind of have to like, mm, I need to uh, invest some time into, into shooting. If there's, if there's like a cloud of enemies and you can just go there and, just, <laughs> and destroy them immediately uh, without any any um, leftovers, you know, any kind of like lingering problems, then you're just like on top of things and you're just like completely smashing on the enemies all the time. But if there's every now and then, there's like a bit of a chunky enemy, right? It feels more engaging that way. And also that allows you to just put some more threats on the screen and then you mean you have to start avoiding the threats, but there is a balance that you need to strike there. And I'm probably over that tipping point a couple of times here already. So yeah, I need to pay attention to that later on. But so far, this is fun. Um, something I noticed with the big chunky enemy is probably we we're gonna have to think about bullet canceling. So with each enemies, I actually, when I will shoot them down, I want the bullets to disappear. 
Uh, and also, something I also noticed is that, I mean, we already talked about this. Some people already suggested this, maybe putting a shadow underneath some enemies. And in this case, like when the enemy is really big and chunky, it would be nice if it was like hovering. And I cannot replicate that easily. I mean, I could try, but I cannot really, really replicate that easily in the schedule editor, uh, uh, in the brain editor. Um, because it is also in relationship with the shadow. Like if it's hovering, the shadow should actually be stationary, right? So you want to have the shadow underneath the sprite and the distance between the sprite and the shadow um, should be changing so that it's, it looks like it's hovering. Um, so the shadow would be actually moving and and the sprite above would be kind of like hover. It, mm, it's, it's a bit of a system, but I think it's worth it to apply it because it will come in handy when we deal with the... Mm, with a boss fight, yeah. So maybe hovering, something to think about. Um, <clears throat> and then otherwise, yeah, I noticed like with this enemy, because it's a bigger sprite, for the first time I noticed it's kind of bad where the bullets are coming out. They're coming out of the center and it doesn't feel like there's nothing there that shoots bullets. It would be, with this enemy, it would make sense if it came out of the snout or out of these legs on the sides. Um, so this is the first time where I'm actually considering doing some, like when I feel the need to reposition the place where the bullets come from, uh, I'm going to have to think about this a little bit, but yeah, it's, it's going well. So this is going to be the last section. When I'm finished with this section, we're going to be finished with this first test run. I've learned a lot so far. Let's go. Right, so it seems like I'm finished. This was, <laughs> this took a while. <laughs> this took a couple of days and it was emotionally difficult. Uh, it's it's kind of like a scary part of the development. We're gonna talk about this later on, but for now, let me show you what I have. This is like a first test. This is not the final game. This is just like testing out the tools and seeing what, kind of, what we're learning about the future of this project. Uh, I, I reloaded this, I just need to play this. All right, so as I said at the beginning, uh, just quite static popcorn enemies just flying in. Now popcorn enemies that, that stand there and shoot, I think we need to rethink them a little bit. Uh, now we have the snakes when the anthem comes in. Big, big, big snakes shooting a lot of stuff, very impressive. And now the, the really chaotic scene here, maybe a little bit too much. Uh, and now we have like these very technical, uh, a little bit more, more uh, beefy enemies. Uh, and now we get the, like the ground enemies in and the beefy enemies, so this is a little bit of an extra challenge. Now I get shot from the side. Uh, okay, now the big chunkers when the music gets more threatening. You can see, oh yes, and then chunkers and ground enemies at the same time, layering the enemies that makes it more interesting. Uh, yeah, this is this part is I'm not, not. I think this part needs work. Yeah, this is this definitely needs work. But yeah, this is the first loop of the music. <laughs> Just like a rough, roughly a minute, I think. Um, and we're going to have to have like three of those loops, so two more of those loops, and then there's going to be a final boss. Now, well, the final boss of the first part, and then there's going to be a second part afterwards. So in total, we're going to have, I think, around six of those loops and then two boss fights. And then more, maybe, let's listen, let, let's just get not ahead of ourselves. Yeah, this is this was really insightful. I already told you all of the things that I noticed. Um, maybe just a couple of things at the end that I, I noticed that I kind of like wrote down. Uh, broadly speaking, something I found out is that in a lot of situations in this game, I feel like I'm uh, cornered, uh, that I the game asks too much of me and I, I kind of like, I'm I, I want to have a little bit of a boost in power and there is no extra abilities that gives us the boost. Usually, this is where we would have like a bomb or like a hyper or something to, to get you out of tricky situations. We don't have that in our game right now. We haven't thought about this at all. But now that we have some level 
uh, we can begin doing experiments and finding out what is the extra abilities that we have in our game. So this is something that I'm looking forward to doing now. And also um, thinking about obviously stuff like maybe making the shot a bit spread error or giving us ability to spread out the shot a little bit um, because sometimes I want to maybe hit enemies. Like right now we are very focused, very linear. But on the other hand, it's kind of nice. It makes the game really easy and simple. I don't know. We have to think about this a little bit. Uh, also something that's completely missing are pickups. Um, they are really great at giving, adding more dynamic situations to the game because suddenly you have to go somewhere to pick something up. So... I also want to think about pickups and obviously something that's completely missing is scoring. There is no any kind of scoring system. We have to add one and we need to also add uh, some kind of UI a little bit. We need to put like a score indicator somewhere and think about these things and maybe like a life indicator, you know, these kinds of stuff. Broadly speaking, this was a really excellent good run. I have a ton of things that I want to deal with. We're going to do that at, right at the beginning of the next episode. We're going to go through our notes and we're going to create like a to-do list for this next phase of things that we want to fix, things, things that we want to tweak, things that we need to find out. But for now, let us move on to the end of the episode. As always, at the end of each episode, I say a big thank you, a huge shout out. Thank you so much for your support, guys. On coffee.com, this show is supported by you guys out there on coffee.com. And especially on a difficult and long episode such as this one, I'm infinitely grateful for all of your beautiful, beautiful support. Also, I wanted to show you some stuff by, this is by Louis. So this is a beautiful gift that Louis is doing. He's currently working on a second level of Kalikan. And he put, uh, he posted this. I think this is, at this point, it's already abandoned. It's a little bit old, but I really love this. Uh, so these are like huge ships that he designed with little turrets on top and turrets turn towards the player, which makes them uh, ships look really alive and, and like they're paying attention to where the player is. This is really cool. Um, something that I'm paying attention to as well is that there is a bit of a cobblestoning. The turrets are not moving in sync with the rest of the ship, which makes them feel like they're distinct objects, because they are probably distinct objects. We had the same problem here in our game, where uh, the ground enemies are not quite always moving in sync with the ground. It's, it's one of those problems that creeps up every now and then. I've seen these effects also happen in very uh, professional, high-quality shmups. You know, in, in real schmups by real developers, and, you know, professional developers. And because, like, this is also something that you see in professional schmups, I'm not sure if we have to address it. Like, it's just like a little graphical glitch. But, uh, yeah, let's just put that on our list. This is fighting against the ground is something I maybe want to think about a little bit. But yeah, beautiful ships by Louis. Uh, again, probably already changed, but that's why you should join in the Discord and follow, you know, the development Calican and other shmups that are being posted there on our Discord. Really, really good stuff, Louis. Yes, yes, yes. So, big episode, but we got through it. We have a ton of insights and ideas. I'm eager to address them on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.